It all starts with an idea, a vision that you see clearly, but others are clouded to. The plan that others are scared to touch, you leap towards. You are a creative on a mission. When the journey got rocky, others you thought would ride with you, left you. Always remember to be in your corner, the creative corner. Yo. Oh, what's up, baby? Hey, huh? what's going on, my man? Oh, chilling, man. I heard you on the air right now. Oh Good yeah. Job. Hey, thank you, my brother. It's a it's a blessing. It's a blessing to be doing what I what I'm what I'm doing, right? I love it. That's dope. That's dope. Hey man, hard work always pays off. Hey, and you're like the person perfect person to like say that because your hard work is literally paying off every time I see you. From Man. the quality of uh, motion pictures that you're putting out to even just like cool creative content that you're putting out. Yeah, man, it's all about just working, man. Like the, the trick to, to life is like working hard, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? So they be like, it's always how you do this, how you do that. The, the honestly is working hard. Like there's yeah. no way around working hard, like straight up. Yeah, man. As an athlete, do you feel like that's kind of where you learn that from though? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Because, um, honestly I use football like to take out a lot of aggression that I had growing up as a kid, you know, always wanted this or that, or, you know, felt like, you know, my dad wasn't around a lot. So I used that aggression to take it out on football. And I noticed me working hard, harder than everybody else. That was the key. If I work harder than everybody else, like, dang, like, man, they, they love me. Like all the coaches always love me because I work my butt off all the time. So I thought, you know, that that's where I learned that from when I was like 10, man, 10 maybe. That's dope. I guess I should officially like introduce you. I got my man, JD Allen, Inglewood Films, director, uh, athlete, father. Uh, what else should we add to this? This this long list of things that you are. <laughs> sexy. Se sexy, I heard somebody say sexy. <laughs> hey, hey, I, I used to model. Um, I, I rap for a little bit. That's how I kind of got into making films because I, I used to tell my stories um, through music, but through rapping, um, I used to actually go to Ogden and go to schools and like talk to like junior, different junior high schools in Ogden like long time ago. So that's how I got into everything that I'm doing now by telling stories through music. So I did everything, man. Life is about trying new things and getting out my comfort zone. I definitely, I, I would say I did that. Definitely, man. Well, I appreciate your time, man. Joining me on the Creative Corner, man. A new segment that I have on the show. Um, so I want to start off with Inglewood Films. It's it's the thing that I feel like um, I know you the most for is the uh, the the different film content that you have been putting out. So, what is Inglewood Films, and how are you a part of it? Um, Inglewood Films is you know honestly everyone that want to be a part of something. Um, so with football, it was always, you know, me being a part of a team, right? So Inglewood Films is everybody that come to come along for a certain project. If they, if they if they're holding a damn light, they part of Inglewood Films. You know what I'm saying? So Inglewood Films is like family, man. Like um, just creative people um, coming together and just creating something, having the ideas and putting it out there, and um, you know, finishing what we start, bro. Like I always try to preach that to everybody. If you say you're going to do something, do it. Cause I, you know, like I, I try to stand by that. So Inglewood Films is, you know, family, family film, and family you, making films, man, together. And what's your part in that family? Um, I started it, man. I created it. Um, I got Inglewood from, of course I'm from Inglewood, but, um, they used to call me Inglewood. They used to call me Inglewood when I was with Cincinnati Bengals. Um, they, they so that's where I got, so from that, you know, when I was a rapper, they, I was, my name was Inglewood. And then, you know, performing wasn't my thing. Like, it wasn't my thing. I want to be behind the camera. So after that, you know, I, that's, I, that's how I came up with Inglewood Films. And that's where it came from, man. And just, 
I started working hard, started learning, um, didn't go to school for it, and just be- Inglewood Films became something bigger than what I could have ever imagined, honestly. Definitely. So did you did you go to school for film at all? Oh, man, no. Nope. The whole time, I'm like, I'm, I'm going to the league. I'm about to, you know, make all this money. So I never even thought about film, honestly. I didn't. I didn't think about nothing else about except for going to the NFL and buying property. You know what I'm saying? So, nope, I had no idea this is what I was supposed to be doing, but this is what I was supposed to be doing for sure. So where did that where did that spark come from? When you're like, man, I want to try to make a movie or I want to try to get a camera and see what this thing does. <laughs> watching movies. I love I'm a movie buff. I love watching movies and um I seen a crappy movie one night and I was like, man, I could do, I think I could do something better than that. And that's that, where it came from. I got how, a little camera. That's and how I just most started messing. Yep. I, I was gonna start say messing. that's how most uh rap careers start is yo, I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep, yep. So that but you know, with music, like I met a lot of people, bro. Like I met a lot of people through music and uh just connecting. And with film, the the trick about like going to film school, like you already have all these connections and you got people loaning you equipment and all that. So I didn't have none of that, bro. You know what I mean? So it was me. Like I had to like really go out and network and put in some footwork. You know what I mean? So that's why it's different for me. Cause I put in the work. So it feel better if I put out something and people like it. I even like when I put out something and people don't like it, like that's what I need as an artist. You know what I mean? Like, so it's man, film is like dope for me. Like it is it, dope. It's therapeutic for sure. Is it hard to uh, to do everything you do? I mean, obviously, it is, right? But is it hard to um, to to write out maybe the screen? I guess it's a screenplay, right? Write out the story, find the actors, find the location, find the equipment. Like, is it hard to do all of that? And are you doing all of that? Um, all everything you just said is part of vision. You got to have vision, right? So. If you have a vision, bro, like if you got a vision, like all that's easy. Um, if you got a vision for somebody being creepy and and you already know somebody that's naturally like <laughs> creepy, <laughs> like, damn, that'd, that'd be perfect. They ain't even got to work for this this role. You know what I'm saying? So I, so I love working with people that's like first timers and all that. Like, I love that because, you know, I want to make sure they have fun and, and it they always have fun. So no, nah, yeah, I, I do everything. Like I, I usually find a, a lot of the actors locations and, but it all depends on what project we're working on. But yeah, I, I usually do all that. But if you got vision, man, um, it's easy to me. It's easy. Where, you know I mean, what I mean? Yeah, definitely. You, you say that, uh, you're a big movie fan. You're a movie buff. Um, what, what movies kind of inspired you to make movies, I guess is, would be the question. Or do you have wow. any like oh, directors yeah. or anybody like that that you're like, man, I want to I want to shoot a film and shoot it. I don't want to say kind of like them, but maybe get inspired to to shoot something similar or something like that. First of all, Training Day that's that's one of my favorite movies. Um, Kung Fu Hustle that's one of my favorite movies. Um, Last Dragon. Um, I used to watch that as a kid, man. I used to watch that like twenty times. So Last Dragon, that's what got me like, dang, you know what I'm saying? That was a black movie and that that got me, you know what I'm saying? That that sparked something, but football was my football was my first love. So, you know, I wasn't going to try to stray away from that. But yeah, Last Dragon, um that that's what like, you know, motivated me and really got me into movies. I'm surprised so, you haven't said no uh no sports movies. Uh yeah, well, sports movie, oh, Rudy, like I love Rudy. Um the program oh what yeah the program was that was my movie what's the program um hey who was in it um see because i'm like remember the titans like coach carter like those those sports movies to me are classic so the program who was in it was i think dang i forgot his name i forgot his name is is it a uh, okay is it a, a football movie yeah it's a football movie okay who was in that movie? Mm-hmm. Halle Berry. Oh, Omar Epps. Okay, Omar Epps. He was the lead. Um, Halle Berry was in it. Yep. Oh, if Omar yeah, was that, in it, gotta was be good. Movie. Yeah, yeah. That. So back in the day, yeah, that that was my jam right there. 
So if you uh so you what is there a certain genre that you love more than the other? Like are you a horror guy or are you a, a comedy guy? guy? I'm I do everything. Like I love doing everything, but like I love like gory horror, man. Like I, I love create I love creating gory horror. So I wanna hopefully start doing more of that. But I, I love everything but horror, yeah, that's my that's my jam right there. I love that uh, you know, cause I I, I kinda noticed that, right? Even with the newest project, uh is it Saya? Saya, Saya, the newest project, yeah. Saya. Um, there were some like creepy elements in that, like the clown, right? Take us through that movie. How did that movie come about? <laughs> Man, I was at work because I still work. Like I, you know, um, I was at work and I got there like at five in the morning, and I usually listen to uh, listening to different podcasts or whatever. I'm listening to motivation, but one day I was listening to um, a film podcast. And they were talking about how sci-fi is the hardest genre to do. And I was just listening to it like, mm, okay, that's the hardest genre to do. And then I came up with Saya that day. And then I just like came up with, that's how I came up with it, bro. Like they said it was hard and I wanted to try it <laughs> like straight up. That's how Saya came about. And, and the thing is like, I knew it was going to be a short film because it costs a lot of money to do a feature film. And so I was like, okay, I'm a, I'm a create this story, but I'm gonna create it so people could want more, and somebody could be like, hey, here's three million dollars. Let's make this a feature. So that's exactly how I wrote, how I came up with Saya, and then I got Meliani um, to help me write it, to um, help me finish writing. It. I got the whole story down, storyline down for her, and then she helped me finish writing it. And then you know, we just, that's how Saya came about. Me listening to a podcast. <laughs> so I mean, because you, the 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 star of the movie had a, a, a writer's credits on it. Yep, Mele. I went to yep. high school with Mele. Did you? She don't remember. She was too cool, right? Like she was a volleyball player, like beautiful. Like, <laughs> of course she didn't know me. Like some nerd that wanted to be on the radio, radio, right? Like she didn't know me. Uh, <laughs> so you always wanted to be on the radio, huh? Well, since even I back then. You know, wow. kindergarten, you know, kindergarten, when they pass around the little paper, what do you want to be when you grow up? Like, radio was there, man. Are you serious? I promise you, bro. Bro, you, hey, that's dope. That's motivation right there. Yeah, man. And, and it comes in different ways, man. It comes in in forms of me creating my own opportunities with podcasts, right? And things like that. And, you yep. know, God bless Ski Rock for, for the opportunity that I have right now to, to have friends and dope creators like yourself on a platform like this. You know what I mean? Exactly. Hey, that that's dope, man. Uh, hey, congrats to you because, you know, you was pushing just like, you know what I'm saying? Hard work. It pays off. And look at you, man. That boy is smiling. Look at him over there <laughs> cheesing. I love it. <laughs> hey, so so are, how close are we to the three mil? Um. Wow. That is funny because we had me, me and Mel – we um we had a meeting with this guy and they had one or two million for Saya to make it a feature, right? But the catch is they needed the feature film script done and um and they needed it done and it had to be like submitted, like the the script had to be uh, copyright copywritten already and it had to be like like something else had to be done. So like he wanted Saya, but we didn't have a feature film script done. And Saya and uh, Meliani, I said Saya. See, Meliani, she was trying to like work on the script. Like she was trying to hurry up and finish it, but they, but he was the guy was like, uh, we need the script done like now and it and it had to be registered with W A G or something like that. So we we close, like we there, like we are there. You know what I mean? So I'm just keep grinding, man. Just keep grinding away. Yeah, and you know the cool thing about this, JD, is that you are in control. You are the one that like don't don't feel like uh, and I know you don't, but it's dope to know that. And th this is why I want to empower creators is because they need you. They need you. They need your content. They need that brain. They need this creator. Right. And as long as you know that you're going to be good, bro. That one opportunity that I don't want to say slip, but, you know, the next one, it might be even bigger. It might be even better. It might make more okay. sense for the people that you partner with. Exactly. And and uh, Mel, like she's still going to like finish the script just in case, uh, you know, they come back. They're going to have to come back around. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, like something's going to come up. So even with that, like we're still working on other stuff. 
So it's not like you can't never wait on nobody. First of all, you can never wait because if you wait on somebody, you're going to always be waiting on somebody. So, I, yeah, I, I just, you know, like we just put out Saya, but we still got all this other stuff coming and going. And you know what I mean? So yeah. it's all about working, man, being consistent. Like everybody, man, y'all, y'all got to stay consistent. I, don't say you're going to do this and do that and don't do it. Cause that's what a lot of people do. And then they quit cause they get discouraged, man. You got to keep moving. Yeah, man. That's the biggest thing, man, is, is not quitting when those times get rough. You know, when those times are like everything stacked to get you, the world sucks. You keep pushing yep. through. Yep. Yep. That, that's how I be. So with Saya, bro, like, um, like I was writing it, I, I came up with the story. I had, I had the idea. I already knew how it was going, like how it was going to go from start to finish. And I got like probably three or four scenes in and then I started going, I think that's when I kind of started going through my divorce, bro. And I hit Mel up like, Mel, I can't, I got writer's block. Like I can't, I can't like write, like, can you do this? Like, can you do it? And can you like finish it? Like here, here go to the storyline, here go the storyline, you finish it and I'll revise it. She was like, what? I would love to. And she finished it. I revised it. And we, you know, went back and forth. And that's how we finished it. So no matter what you go through, you're going to go through stuff. It's life. You know what I mean? But yeah. can't quit. And yep. ain't no way I was going to quit. I don't care, care, you know, what I was going through on, on my end. Like, I wasn't going to let everybody else down, getting them all pumped and hyped. Like, you know, so that that's me. Like, I'm, I'm going to finish. I ain't going to never quit. Like, especially quit on my people. So I love that, man. Especially going through a divorce. That, that has to be tough. Yeah, yeah, but you know, it's learning experience, and then at the end, it's you'd be like, "Dang, that was a blessing!" Like, man, <laughs> you know what I mean? Everything happened the way it's supposed to. Just know that, like, you know what I mean? Everything happened the way it's supposed to. You know what I liked about that movie was that I felt like there was an opportunity to uh, show some different stories that within that movie, right? Like the clown, the clown intrigued me so much. Like, like I wanted to see that guy a lot more of that guy. See, remember what I said in the beginning? I came up with the story so people could want more. Yep. That's how I strictly came up with the story and, like, you know, got it got it written and storyboarded so people could want more. Like, damn, I want to see this. I want to see that fight. Like, how did they fight? I want to see, you know, even at the end, the end of credits, when the dude jumped down, you know, the cyborg. Yeah. Like, so it's everything you have to strategize. Life, you have to strategize. So, um. Yeah, man. All, always about having like a strategy. The, speaking of those, uh, the ending credits, like the graphics. Who, who, who was behind the graphics, the the animation? Because, man, that if throughout the whole thing, I'm like, wow. Like there was what was the project before before this one? The project before Saya that you released. Man, I, what was I it? There was a no, project. Or- yeah, uh, uh, was it Amazon? Was it uh the last one with um um homeboy uh what's his name? And he 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 goes around. It's like uh, uh, about luck or uh, not luck, but like giving back. Um, um, homeboy, the brother that that uh, and two is actually he plays a cop in it too, and they slam him against the car. Was that the last one that you released? Oh dear lord! Was it dear, dear lord? lord. Yeah, I think you're talking about. Wait, yeah, you're then, talking about dear Lord. Yeah, okay. he goes to the yeah. church, and I think I think uh, Demar's the uh, preacher, I believe. Yep, that's dear Lord, directed by Tua. Yeah, so that that like obviously the two different projects, but you could just tell like the level, right? This last project that you did is on a whole nother level, and um, the reason why I bring it up is because of the graphics. They really stood out to me. The animation, or I don't even know if it's called animation. But who who was kind of the the mastermind behind that? Who put in that work? Depends on what part, because I did I do visual effects. Like I do I did the visual effects, and Tarek did the visual effects as well. So depending on what part, because we collaborated um, on the visual effects. Um, like he put in. So Tarek, um, he's dope. He's he's working with um, Evan Moore right now. Like they're they're killing it with the music videos. But like, so he helped me with the visual effects and yeah, some parts. So we just collaborated, bro. Like, um, that's what it's about. Collaboration and, and connecting with different, you know what I'm saying? Different production companies Dope. and just different people that, that want to work and that's like, you know, willing to work and put in the work. Yeah. 
I yeah, said it. I, I showed him Saya and he was like, bro, he's like, come, he was like, <laughs> he's like, wow, yeah, I'm gonna put in some. I'm so he put in extra work after seeing Saya, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, that's how that went down. I uh I really liked that project too. And the 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 thing that really stood out to me, there was a couple things, but how many different shots you did? You did the first person where she's going through the office, like going through the hall, fighting everybody. That shot was incredible, looked really dope. Um, just all of the, you, it wasn't just like one shot that was done. I feel like you did multiple different things. Oh yeah, man. So when it comes to basically what I'm doing, I'm trying to entertain, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to entertain the audience and I'm, I I am part of the audience because I have to watch it like 500 times. Right. So I try to always try to make something that I will watch and that I would like, of course, you know, sometimes Everybody not gonna like everything, but that's bro. That's that's how it works. Yeah, so I, I'm part of the audience. You know what I mean. So I, I I do what I would what I thought would look tight, and some of the stuff I was like, dang, what if we did a POV shot where we do like five minutes of just a POV shot, and then it goes back into this, and you just gotta you just gotta think on a move, man. I always um so some of the some of the um shots that's in there, it just. It just popped to me, you know what I'm saying? Even though that wasn't even planned. Yeah. Um. So like the clown shot, um, my assistant director, like it wasn't planned. Like the clown shot, like how he came in and and he like you know multiplied and yeah. So that wasn't planned. So my assistant director, he was hot. He was like, "Wait, this is not on the shot list." He was like, "This is not on the shot list." Wait, hold up, JD. I was like, I was like, Jacob, Jacob Smiley, like he he be on he be on my head. That's what that's his job. To, you know, make sure we're on time. And he was like, This is not on the shot list, JD. Come on, man. Like, what are you doing? I was like, trust me, please. Like, it's gonna be real quick. I'm gonna knock, I'm gonna do it in 10 minutes and we're gonna move on to our next shot. And so a lot of the shots like happen like that, you know, and a lot of people have to trust me and trust my vision. And that's what it's about. Just trust within, you know, the whole team who's ever part of Inglewood Films that day. Like, it, it's all about trust. Word. <laughs> yeah, man. You guys look like you guys have a lot of fun on the set, too. Oh, always. Yeah. That, it, yeah, I, I try to make it try to make it fun, but, you know what I'm saying, make sure we get the job done and, you know, stay professional. Definitely. So, yeah, we always have fun on set. My, That's uh, why I like people want to work with us, man, because they could tell. The uh, the, gro- the grocery clerk, who is that? Who, who played the gro- grocery clerk? Oh, that's Brandon Grundy. Oh man, he had me rolling. Yeah. <laughs> wait, when she oh, when she went outside. <laughs> I need I need something with him. I need more of him. He's funny. Yeah, he's really funny. Check out, bro. If you haven't seen Afro Black, check out Afro Black. That's Demar's a leader on that, right? Yeah, I need to check it out. I've only I only seen like a, I believe he's like dodging bullets or something. He's like going real fast. I seen the clip yeah. So that. he's fighting. Yeah. So the other guy, that's Brandon. Oh, that's Brandon. He's fighting. Yeah. So that that was my first. That was like the first short film that like really was like, damn, film is what I'm supposed to be doing. So Afro Black is the first short film, and um, yeah, Brandon and Demar. That's the first time they ever met, and bro, it was so much fun. Like that's why I that's why I love film because like I brought all these people together. And, you know, just thinking like, dang, this just came from a crazy idea. I was at work one day because I was at work just, you know what I'm saying, trying to game plan and, you know, trying to use my vision. And I came up with Afro Black and that's how I came about. So I'm thinking like, damn, I brought all these people together off a little idea. Just, you know what I'm saying? Just a little idea. And check out Afro Black. Yeah, Brandon, he killed it. He go by HD. (laughs) Where, 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 Where can we uh, where can we check it out? Afro Black is on YouTube. Dope. Yeah, Afro Black is on YouTube. Check that out, man. Um, starring Demar Jones and got Honey B, HD in there. Brandon Grundy, he's a beast. And um, him and him and um, Brandon and Demar hit it off, man. Like they were comedy. Like it, it was perfect. It just worked out perfect. Where, uh, what, what's the biggest challenge for you as a creator? I mean, you've mentioned writer's block. You've mentioned. Um, a lot of live stuff, like, but what's what's been the biggest challenge for you as a creator? Um, time, balancing everything, like you know, finding time because I still I still work, you know. What I'm saying I can't I can't do the film film like I want full time, 
but eventually like it'll be there but yeah just balancing everything like family life um work um then i gotta sometimes put 50 people you know get them together make sure they on time you know and like the last project was um our first sag project which is called the shoebox and you know getting everybody paid for that like man that that was tough but it it got done and you know that that's gonna be a a dope project too i'm trying to like level up step step my game up every step of the way you know so just balancing man like just like life you got to find balance in everything dope man I, i i i uh i was telling you this yesterday i believe we were talking and, um, you know, I admire you as a father. You know, you have two sons, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. I have three sons. Three sons. And yeah. uh, I always see you pushing them, right? Re- uh, rather if they uh, are, are working out or uh, out having fun with, with motorcycles. Uh, what does it mean to be a father to you? That's the reason I'm here, man. That's what it feel like. I feel like the reason I'm here is to, you know, give the world something. And they are like my world, you know what I mean? Like, so I I can't, I can't like slack. I don't know. I just don't want to be average because I don't want them to want to be average because people normalize average all the time. Every day, like people normalize stuff that shouldn't be normalized. So I, as soon as I get up home from work, I work out and I make sure they see me working out. Even if they don't work, want to work out, I make sure they see me and they be like, you know, when, when they get older, they're going to realize like, dang, what am I doing? I'm, you know, they ain't doing nothing. So like it's, it's going to come. So, yeah, I just try to show them, uh, you know, I try to show them everything that I have and I, don't, I just don't want to be average. So I don't want them because I don't want them to be average. So definitely it's, you know, father is everything, bro. You know, being a um, a black father in America, what what challenges? Obviously, you know, we we all face challenges living in America and living in an America where we are, you know, people of color. Is it is it scary for you being a, a father of three sons? Um, and how are you preparing them for what we live in today? I mean, we've seen those rioters and those thugs trample the 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 Capitol, right? So, how do you? Prepare your sons for this this real life that we have here in, in the United States. Absolutely, it's scary, man. Like, it's scary because I'm in, I, like, I wasn't born in Utah. Like, I was born in Cali, you know what I'm saying? Like, a way, like, different, like, totally different. So my boys are out here. And when my oldest son, which is 13 now, when he was, like, five, you know, he used to, he used to say, um, Dad, I wish my hair was straight because everybody used to want to feel his hair and be like, oh, you got curly hair. You know what I'm saying? And and my now nine-year-old, when he was like five or four, you know, he asked me and his mom, like, mom, why am I, why is my skin dark and everybody else is white? You know what I'm saying? So that stuff, like, hurt. Like, it, it kind of hurt because, you know, they noticed that. So me... I make sure they know that they know that they are kings and they are beautiful. And, you know, when people want to feel their hair and touch their hair and stuff, like don't let that happen, Mm -hmm. but just know that one day they're going to want to be you just, you know, stay humble. I teach them to be humble and respectful and, you know, have manners. So that's why I teach them the way I do. So I make sure that they have manners and super respectful because it's going to be harder for them. Like straight up, like stuff is going to come, like it's going to be harder for them. You know, I went through a lot out here, so I know, you know, what's coming for them, you know, so I just give them, give them what I have, you know, from what I learned. You're very unique, man. You, you went to BYU, right? Yeah. And you played football at BYU. What was that like going from Inglewood or going from California to, 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 to Utah and going straight to one of the, the, uh, lack of better words, whitest colleges in the country um how was that bro it was um so my first year it was like it was depressing (laughs) so i had a boy so i had a homie that came from same area came from la with me and he was gonna he was gonna be a cornerback too say so same area south central la and um he went back home like he he had a full scholarship like we came from the hood he had a full full scholarship. He went back home in like two weeks after two weeks. 
because he couldn't take it. So, so my Man. first year, it was uh, learning. I seen a lot of, I heard a lot of racist stuff that I didn't hear back in Inglewood, you know, because it's not a lot of white people where I'm from in a certain area. So it, it was different for me. Then the second year, um, I started balling. Like I balled out my second year. And so the football part of it was, it was heaven, bro. It was tight. But when I'm not playing football and don't have my helmet on, you know, outside, you know, I hear some crazy stuff. You know, I heard, I heard, you know, hey, get out of here, nigger. You know, why they drive by me while I'm walking to school or so I heard, you know, so it was different for me. But I was focused. I was always focused, though. You know what I mean? So I was always focused and I just knew what to expect from, you know, people that didn't know any better. So I was focused. I had a goal making it to the NFL. So that was my goal. And you made it. Was the was the, uh, the your first stop with the Bengals? Yeah, I signed a contract with them in 2004. But I, I did. I ended up getting kicked out of BYU, so I had to sign with Cincinnati Bengals. So I signed with them after my after my junior year. And then what was that? What was that? What was that experience like? You you were in the NFL. Your kind of your dreams are coming true, right? What was that like? Bro, it was a weird feeling because it, it it happened like it was supposed to. Um, I knew I was supposed to get drafted, and um, so when the year after I left uh, BYU. Well, when I left BYU, like um, I was going to, supposed to go into my senior year, and we had the top top eight defense in the nation at the time, and like our, you know, like I was like I, I did my thing my junior year, like I did my thing. So you know, I knew you know some good stuff was going to happen. So I signed like uh, two hundred fifty thousand dollar contract. So I wasn't happy. Even at I was I just turned twenty two, and I wasn't happy, bro. Um, I would have rather been at BYU my senior year. You know what I mean? So yeah. life is about timing. Um, when I signed with them, I was the last person signed with them. So I didn't I didn't stay long because like everything is about timing. You know what I mean? So I knew that even when I signed my contract, like I knew that the timing wasn't right like for me. And it, it didn't feel good. Honestly, it, it didn't feel good. You know what I mean? When you know, talking to my boys back home and I'm in the NFL, it just didn't feel good to me. <laughs> do you still have any uh nfl ties do you have any homies that are still balling out uh wow bro like since then i haven't watched i haven't really watched a game in like a couple years like because of all that yeah like i still love football but i haven't really like been keeping up word i yeah. feel you man so what do, do do we see you playing flag football anytime soon or what <laughs> <laughs> we see you at the park out here just uh like you can't play flag football like my man bang ray he be playing leave that to them you too good like you you can't be out here playing flag football with us that's funny i will play like you i haven't played in a long time but i will play you know what i'm saying if somebody if, if somebody got a whole team together and was like jay come play with us I'll be with it, man, because it's been so long. You know, I do miss it. That's that why fair. I don't even watch like football that much, because I, I do miss it. You know what I mean? People always ask me, too, like, would you coach? And I was like, man, I would, but I would miss it. Like, I, I would probably miss it more if I coach. I, I just I would rather see my kids play. Like, it's I have more fun watching my boys play football now. So, Do they have interest in, in football? That's, oh, man, my oldest two, like, if they want to, they're going to the NFL. Like straight up, they're they're better way. I think they're way better than me when I was like that young, or like my nine year old. He's a yeah, like he's a beast. If he focuses on if he he wants he he does wants to go to the NFL. So if he really focuses on that, oh he's gone. Yeah, my 13, 13 year old. If he focus, he he kind of like between football and basketball, but they could go if they want to. Straight that's up. beautiful, man. Yeah, that's not me. Like. You know, that's not me gassing them up. Like, if they really want to go, they'll go easy. How uh, How is the film community here in Utah? Um, it, Like, it's, it's cool. It's, um, a lot of people are competitive. You know how music is out here? Yeah. Um, so, I, I got, I hear, like, a lot of hate, you know. And, bro, like, I, I don't have hate for nobody. I don't care. Like, like, I. I love to see people's success. Um, so not a lot of people like like that or want to work with a lot of, you know, different production companies and stuff like that. Um, but it's a lot of people that's 
you know, that loves to work with other people. You know what I mean? And um, so it, it can be dope. Like, it can be cool. But it can be like, oh, man, I love you. And then, you know, the usual out here is like, oh, man, I love you. Then, like, oh, man, I can't stand that guy behind your back. It's So it it's kind of... It's kind of, you know, on and off, I guess. That's why I always say, don't don't feed me lip service. Do it with yeah. deeds, right? If you say you want to work together or you want to do something, let's do it. Don't And if you really mess with me, then mess with me, right? Show me, exactly. right? Don't, don't do it with a bunch of lip service. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So it goes back to, like, if you say you're going to do something or you want to do something, then do it, man. Like, you got to be about your business. And a lot of people, you know, they say they want this and that, but, you know, end up not coming through. Exactly. Um, what does it take to get into an Inglewood film movie? Or do you do a casting call or anything like that? How can somebody get involved? Sometimes. Yeah, so sometimes we do casting calls, but sometimes it's just, if people reach out. A lot of people, man, a lot of people have been reaching out, and I was like, man, if you serious, it's all about if, you, if somebody's serious, man. If they serious... I love that because like they want it. Sometimes people like they want, they kind of, ah, I kind of want it, but I don't know. But if, if people want it, bro, like that's what, that's what makes it fun because they want to be there. Like, you know what I'm saying? They want to be there. So it's just reach out to me. Um, a lot of people have been reaching out to me and I tell them like, oh man, as soon as I get a big project or a project, I'm going to let you know, like straight up. And if you're still interested and if you show up, then that's showing me a lot if you show up because lip service is cool. But when you show up, that's everything, bro. Definitely, man. Well, I'm glad you showed up and I'm glad I showed up for this uh, uh, creative corner with my man, J.D. Allen. Where can the people follow you and where can they uh, hit you up at? Our website is um, theinglewoodfilms.com. So look us up on there. Uh, we have projects on Amazon. So just type in Inglewood Films on Amazon. Just one word, Inglewood Films. Um, that shit pop. Uh, it should pop up on Amazon. Check out. We have blog, blogs on YouTube. Um, just just search Inglewood Films, man. Hopefully, we'll pop up everywhere. If you type that in. Absolutely. I'm not gonna lie, man. I, I've been watching the uh, the go. Is it Ghost Hunters? Uh, Ghost. Oh, Ghost, Ghost Blogs. Blogs. Mario Paps, yeah. I've been watching that series, bro. And uh, man, that thing is creepy. Or oh, although, is, is it real? Bro, it's. I don't mess with that stuff. Like for real, I don't, I don't mess with that stuff. So when we, when we're out there on the field and she like try to talk to me and give me the talk, I don't, because I don't want nothing to get attached to me. And it's nah, bro. Like it's real. Like the energy is real. I, uh, when I go home. So when we left asylum 49, I went home, bro. I was scared. Like for real. Like I was, yeah. Asylum 49. That's, that's, <laughs> That's creepy, man. Like, that's the creepiest spot ever. And I actually seen something while I was shooting um, Chappelle's uh, music and Chaotic's music video. When I was shooting in Asylum 49, I seen a woman in black. I swear on everything. I'm getting my heart pounding just thinking about it. I seen a woman in black, and we thought it was somebody in the building. And we was like, no, nah, she went this way. And we went down there. It was a wall, bro. And, yeah, like, nah. Asylum 49, man, it's real. Like, that stuff is real. I'm getting chills right now. Bro. It's real. So, I'm telling you, if you guys want great content, you got to go check out Inglewood Films on YouTube, Inglewood Films on Amazon Prime. Go check out all of his content because it's it's really good, and it will leave you, like, feeling that way. Because I was I finished my workout. I came home, took a shower. I popped it in. Because you, you dropped, like... You dropped like all the episodes on your YouTube channel at once. And I was like, what? And it was like back to back. I watched them all. <laughs> Dope, man. I appreciate you. Like, that's love. That's what I'm saying. Like, as a community, if we just like show love and like real support to one another, man, we, we'll be so much further. So that's one thing about, you know, the music industry out here or the film industry. Like, if we really show genuine support, and love and wanting to see other people make it, man, I think it'll be so, so much easier for us all. Like for real. Absolutely. It's that well, ecosystem it. thing, right? It's that ecosystem. Why yeah. wouldn't, why wouldn't I support somebody that's doing something dope and something that I enjoy, right? Exactly. Something I'm subscribed to something that I literally will tell folks like, you got to check this out. Why wouldn't you want to support that? It's because when people do, when people don't want to, it's when they have an insecurity with themselves. Right. Yeah, and that's 
I mean, it, it's an ego thing. It's a, I, I think it, a lot of do. It has a lot to do with ego, man. It's like, don't you think though, as a as a creator, don't you think as a creator though, you have to have a little bit of an ego in some way, shape, or form? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you got to have your own ego, but you know, you got to stay humble. Like you got to stay humble, but you if you're too humble, that's when people will step on your neck if you're too humble. But if you have too much ego, bro, you'll stop your own success. Like people not going if you got have an ego, nobody going to really want to be like, "Ah, why well, I want to work with this dude? He think he all this and that." So you got to balance. Like I said, everything is balanced, bro. You got to have a balance. And so- that, that that's me always trying to figure out a balance for it. every single thing and everything ties into everything so discipline man is that's the key y'all like discipline you got to be disciplined like every little thing like even just waking up and getting out of bed and doing your bed every morning like whatever it is like discipline man you got to have that absolutely that helps you balance i agree with you man well i'm uh i'm gonna work on a script i'm gonna make i'm gonna make a short film <laughs> come on i'm Let's inspired <laughs> that's right that's that's all it takes. Like like when we're kids, you know, when you're a kid and you had this crazy imagination. And then you know when you get older, then you lose that. <laughs> you're like, yeah, that, so that's why I'm still making this fun for me, because I get to go back and be a kid and have this bro, Saya, that's a that's weird. Like, like us black folks, we don't do sci-fi. Like, you know what I'm saying? We don't really do sci-fi. So I was just trying to have this crazy imagination outside the box, do some shit that I'm not used to. You know what I mean? And that's yeah. that's what is that's what life about, man. Stepping outside the box, being uncomfortable and being awkward in an awkward situation. How so, hard was it to edit um, Jay's voice in that movie? Jay's voice? Yeah. <laughs> that's actually my voice. That's funny. You did a voiceover? <laughs> yeah, I did a voiceover and changed it up. Messiah. Oh my yeah. god! Yeah, you killed that. Yeah, that's me. Yep. See, it's little details like that that people won't really understand or see. But as a creator, like my mind was like, how did he switch his voice up like that? Because you know, he's like his power was electricity, right? Yeah. And that's what it sounded like. It sounded like you had some type of like electricity in your voice. Yeah. Very well I, done, yeah. man. I was doing um effects on my vocals but yeah little everything about details I agree, everything about details bro like for real like discipline that's about that's details you gotta have details and everything you working out every morning and start you know posting your live like bro like you you getting that discipline right now yep so I'm tired of shit <laughs> But it's all good. I'm yeah. still here smiling still with my boy, man. Like this feel good. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I'm tired, but I ain't tripping. Um, <laughs> so there is there's gonna be a young creative that sees this video, that listens to the show, that is like, man, this inspired me. What advice or what tips can you give a young creator wanting to maybe follow the footsteps of JD Allen? Man, I'm I'm not like special. I work my butt off. Like, I work hard. Like, that's the trick. Working hard. Um, when I played football, like, I was I was good. Like, I was good. And my teammates used to always be like, man, how do you just go out, go out there on the field and just make it look easy? It, it's all about your mindset and mental. Like, of course, I was nervous, but I never showed that. And – they didn't see me put in the hard work before I stepped on that field. So it's, a, it's always about working hard, working, try to work hard than any, everybody else. You know what I'm saying? And um, if you think you can do it, you're right. If you think you can't do it, you're right. It's all about mindset. So work hard, man. Straight up. You would think that you have a martial arts background. <laughs> because the way that you talk is like very martial arty like they teach you discipline they teach you all that stuff do you have any background with martial arts mm, no i don't man i just learned a lot through felon and you know what i'm saying like straight up i learned a lot through felon and who i don't want to be mm. you know what i'm saying and uh what i want my kids to be um bro just learning <laughs> i love it bro <laughs> going through life yeah, just going through life and learning and, you know, try to get my kids what my dad never gave me and, you know, 
little stuff. It's all about the details and, you know, that's important to me. Absolutely. As a man. <clears throat> Absolutely, my brother. Well, I, again, I appreciate your time. I know uh, we ran over. I was like, let's wrap it up a little bit. And then I was like, no, there's more. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> what what else do you want to tell the people before we, uh, before we bounce? Oh, man. Always follow your dream. Um, don't let nobody tell you you can't do something. Never, man. Like, whatever makes you happy. Like, the whole point of life is being happy, finding your happiness and right and being free and so always follow your dream like whatever makes you happy do that don't worry about what people think don't worry about people's opinion none of that man because he say she say like that don't mean nothing just focus on you focus on you man like and you know like you'll do amazing things for you if you could do amazing things for you so so many other people you know what i'm saying you'll help out just by you know fixing you first so don't worry about what people think. Go for yours. Don't quit. Never quit. Never quit. I love it, my brother. Well, again, thank you for your time, brother. And uh, this is another episode of The Creative Corner with my man J.D. Allen. Definitely go check out all his stuff. And uh, you can check the links in the description. And, uh, yeah, have the day deserve. Peace. Yes, sir.